Hey guys! So I'm gonna be doing my February wrap up and there are a lot of books as you can see that I read in the month of February so let's just get on into it. So the first books that I read in February were a part of a series that I had started in January so I'll link my January wrap up down below so you guys can go see that but the first one that I read was Bratfest at Tiffany's. This is the ninth book in the click series. I read the first eight books in the click series in January as well as the summer novellas that come after the eighth book before this one. So I read those. This is by Lisey Harrison. And then I read the tenth book, PSI Love You. The eleventh book, Boys Are Us. The twelfth one, These Boots Are Made for Stocking. The 13th one, My Little Phony. And the last one, uh, A Tale of Two Pretties, all by Lisey Harrison. Now, I had read this before in middle school, and I had gotten up to Boys Are Us, um, so I had only not read, like, the last three. But I wanted to go ahead, and I reread all of them, and then I read the last three, and it was really awesome to be able to just kind of read it continuously and just see where the story went and I honestly cried when I read the last one. I cried so much because it was like just an ending to something I had truly loved in my life and it was just kind of sad but I do own all of them now so I can reread them at any time that I want to. It was just kind of sad for me to have that so you know. Anyway, um, so, and then these are the books that I read the most recently. I'm not really going in order too much. I'm just kind of picking what's next to me. But the next, the one that I just finished like last night and today are Death Note Volume 1 Black Edition. Now this has Volume 1 and 2 of Death Note so I'm counting this as two books because technically it is. Um, but I read this last night. I got this from the library and I read this last night and it was so good. And I mean I was annoying my boyfriend because I just kept like okay, but what if this, and what if he used it this way, and what would happen if, and I just could not stop but think about all these possibilities, and like, how certain situations would work with the Death Note, and what you could maybe do with it, and just, I could not stop myself from thinking about all of these possibilities, so yeah, it completely entranced me, and I just, I love it so much, and then of course, the second thing I read was Volume 2, which this has three, Volumes 3 and 4 in it, so, um, but this was such an amazing, uh, book, and I just, uh, I'm so obsessed with Death Note now. I know, I'm gonna go back to the library tomorrow and tra and put, and trade these back in and get the rest of them, because they have all of them in the black editions, and I'm gonna get the rest, and I'm just gonna read them straight through, because I am obsessed. I almost considered going there today, but, like, my library is, like, 20 minutes away, and I have to go to Longview tomorrow anyway to go to class, so I'll just wait until then so I won't waste gas on this because I have a book I can read today, it's okay. Um, so anyway, those. Um, and then I read A Book of Spirits and Thieves by Morgan Rhodes. This is the spinoff to the Fallen Kingdom series. This is the one that follows the sisters that are in modern day Toronto and they find a mystical book that ends up transporting one of them to Ancient Mythica. This takes place, be the, the parts in Ancient Mythica take place before the events of the Fallen Kingdom series. And it was, it was really good. I honestly had a little bit of trouble getting into it at first, just because, I mean, it wasn't like about Magnus and Cleo and Nick and all my characters, so it was, it was a little hard to get into at first. Like, kind of the same with like the Infernal Devices series because you know I'm like you know you're used to reading the Mortal Instruments and you're used to Jace and Clary and all them and then you have Tessa and all these weird people and you're just like what is going on I just want my characters but um but once I did get about like a hundred pages in then I really started to get into it and I see a lot of similarities between Feral and Magnus although I have to admit that I think he is a lot worse than Magnus so 
that's all I'm gonna say about that. But this was a really good book, and I will and I will definitely be picking up the next one in this uh, series because I'm really interested to see what is going to happen with these characters. Okay, and another book that I read was Eclipse by Stephanie Meyer. I have read the first and second book, uh, Twilight and New Moon, probably like two or three times at least, um, but I never have actually read the last two, which I own the last two, so I don't know why I haven't read them, but I finally uh, went ahead and read Eclipse, so I'll be reading Breaking Dawn at some point. I'm not going to force myself to do it before I'm ready to do it, because that just makes me slumpy. Um, so, but I did go ahead and read this one, and it was kind of boring at times, but, um, it was also, it was pretty good. I think I gave it, like, a three and a half or four stars, um, but, yeah, I kind of, I kind of enjoyed it. I think it was pretty good, um, and I liked the, I don't know, I think it was a little bit more witty than the other ones had been, so I kind of liked, like, the bantering that happened in this book, so... I did like that aspect of it. Um, I hate that this is the version I have. It's a mass market paperback, which I hate, but it didn't bother me as much in this just because a lot of the pages, like, it's mostly dialogue, so it's easier than, like, most mass market paperbacks that are just big chunks of stuff, but yeah, this was pretty good. Okay, and this book I just read the other day, Even When You Lie to Me by Jessica Alcott. This was amazing. I read this in one sitting, and it was so, so good. Okay, so it's basically about this girl who um, ends up falling for her English teacher. I know, it's kind of, it's like a kind of like obvious plot point. I don't like to say the word cliche, so I won't say that word unless it just happens to slip out, but Otherwise, I try not. I try to avoid that word because I'm a writer myself, and I hate that word with a burning passion. Um, but anyway, but this book was absolutely amazing. The characters were just so interesting, and especially the main character. She's so sarcastic, and she's extremely witty, and she makes all of these amazing like um, comebacks to people when they say certain things and everything, but she's also, like, she's also very relatable in that she's pretty insecure, she's really shy, she gets picked on a lot, so if you've ever been, like, an outcast and you felt like the whole school hates you and stuff, this is, like, totally your book, and, like, that was me in high school, so this was totally my book, because I was like, that is me, that is totally me, uh, I never fell in love with an English teacher, any of my teachers for that matter, but <laughs> her, like, self-consciousness and um, how she felt the whole school was against her and everything, that was totally me in high school. So I related very much to this book. And I love the fact, like, like I know that in a lot of books like this, they always feel like the author did a cop-out. This is not a cop-out. This is such a good ending to this book. Oh my gosh. I mean, the whole book is amazing, but the ending, like, if the author had done it any other way, it would have been a cop-out. But the author did it in a way that it was just absolutely perfect, and it just, uh, so good. Just go read this book. It is on, I got it from Book Outlet, so I don't know if it's still on there, but yeah, I think it was like... I paid like $4 for this on Book Outlet, and it's a hardcover, and it's beautiful, and it's amazing, and just go read it. It's it's great. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Okay, and now I'm going to share with you the mangas I read this month. So, one of the first one is Anemo Volume 6. Now, I haven't been showing mangas before, even though I have been reading mangas, but... Goodreads counts mangas as books, so I'm going to start showing them because I'm counting them as books too. And um, and I had been putting them on my Goodreads before. I just hadn't been showing them in wrap-ups because I felt like maybe nobody really wanted to care because nobody else does it. But you know what? I was like, I'm going to do it because that's what I want to do. And I love manga. So this is like a manga that I'm completely obsessed with. I've been following it since like... Um, I want to say, like, around this time last year, I got the first and second volume from a local comic book store when I was living in Santa Fe, and it was so good, and then I found out I had to wait, like, three more months to get volume three, so every time I've been having to wait, like, three months to get the next volume, this is volume six. I got it, and I read these in, like, 30 minutes, so it's really annoying, because I wait three months, and I read it in 30 minutes, and then I'm done, and then I'm like, another three months to wait, 
But this time, <clears throat> the next one's not coming out till like June, which is terrible. And also, the seventh one is gonna be the last one. And I'm like, what am I gonna do with my life? Oh my gosh. Because I, I absolutely love this manga. I own all of them, and up until, you know, the seventh one, which hasn't come out yet, but like, oh. I'm gonna be so upset when it ends because it was just so good and I'm not sure if this is one that they'll end up turning into an anime I don't think so it would be amazing if they did but just I just don't see them doing it but I would I would love it I would love it if they did anybody that's in that kind of business if you're watching this video I totally doubt you are but make an Evo into a anime please I love you okay uh, the next two mangas I read are in the Orin High School Host Club series um, I read volume 17 and volume 18. I own the whole entire <clears throat> box of this manga. And I've slowly been reading it over the course of like a year since I got it. I've been reading it slowly because I read, I watched the anime first. And then my, and then I read the manga because I hated how the anime ended. And so I wanted to see how the manga ended because what I had heard, from what I had heard, the manga ends up going further than the series and it gives you a more satisfying ending which is completely true <clears throat> and it was just a really good ending to this series and I just I love it so much I love these characters with all my heart and the ending was so perfect because that is totally what they would have done in that situation so it was fabulous to see that and I love that like the author Bisco Hattori, that, that's not as hard as I thought it was going to be, but I love that they go through and they, they like show you what they think the future for each character will be and they have like little skits and it's just, ah, it's so great, it's so awesome, I love it, so it, this was kind of a bittersweet thing for me, but I really loved it. Um, now the next few books I'm going to show you are from the Rainbow Thon. So I'm not going to talk much about these guys. I'll just say whether I liked them or not because I did a Rainbow Thon wrap up, which I will link below. So, um, the first book I read was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This was an amazing book. I loved it. Five out of five stars. The next one was Alias Hook by Lisa Jensen. This was also a really amazing book, and I also gave this one five out of five stars. <clears throat> and the next one, Shadow Falls. The next chapter, I read Taken at Dusk and Whispers at Moonrise. Um, and they were really good. It was really satisfying to finally know the thing. So that was great. And I think I gave them either four stars or five stars um but they were both really really good and i'm excited to read the last one and see what happens okay and i also read cinder by marissa meyer now this i also read in one sitting which i am very surprised about because i've been like <clears throat> putting this book off because of the whole cyborg thing i i mean i think cyborgs sound cool in theory but when i think about it i'm like cyborgs kind of sound weird but it was absolutely great. I love the way that they are, how cyborgs are done. And I love the way that the world was uh, presented in this. And just, I really loved this book. I think it was really, really great. <clears throat> and also, I just thought it worth to mention that in the back of this uh, edition, they have the short story glitches. So I also did read that as well. Um, but yeah, I really am looking forward to the rest of the series. I do, I already have the next two books, Scarlet and Crest, so I will be continuing on with that pretty soon. <clears throat> the next book, Ice Like Fire by uh, Sarah Rosh. I don't know why I didn't know that off the top of my head. Anyway, this book was really good, but I did have a little bit of trouble getting into it. And I'll kind of tell you more about that in a second, but <clears throat> it probably mainly had to do with the book I read before that was this book that I'm going to show you next, and it was Malice, and it was very epic fantasy, and since this is another fantasy going after that, it was 
a little bit hard to get into another fantasy after that, but this was such a good book. Once I finally got into it, I was hooked and I was so excited and I really love that we get Mather's point of view in this book, which was something that I had wanted in the last one, so I was excited to see it here. Um... So I'm excited about the rest of this series. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. I think it might be only being a trilogy, but I'd love to see it go on for more than that. I would love if we could also, like, maybe get more views of the kingdom. Like, after the last book in this trilogy, maybe they could go and follow another ruler of one of the other kingdoms. Because I think that would be really interesting to follow. Like, um, my favorite character in here, Cre Crewindia, I think it's how you say her name follow her or something now that would be a very that would be really interesting I think um but yeah this was a five out of five it was either a five out of five or a four out of five stars maybe it was four out of five just because it did take me a little bit longer to get into but again I don't know if that was really because of this book or because the one I read before it <coughs> the one I read before it was Malice by John Gwynn. This was one of my Valentine's Day presents from my boyfriend, and it was amazing. This took me, like, four days to read. Well, no, like, three point, like, three and a quarter days to read, really. But for me, that is a long time, because I normally read a book in a day, if not, like, a book in a quarter of a day. So... It was really surprising that this book took me that long to read. But also, this book is ginormous. It's like 630 pages. And it's like the smallest, it's like really small font. So, this is a, and it's a really dense epic fantasy. So, that's why it took me so long. But it was so good and so interesting. And I'm in love with all the characters. It's, very character driven and you have multiple points of view every chapter like well not every chapter but like every chapter changes to somebody else so there's like a ton of different uh points of view in this and i've already kind of snuck a peek in the beginning of the net in the of the second book and there's a character index and there's a ton of characters that i don't know from this book that are in the character index of the second book so that means that he's like, introducing a lot more characters which means it's gonna be which is why he put a character index because it's gonna be hard to keep up with because there's just so many characters in this but it's just such a good book and I can't wait to continue on with the rest of the series I've just been kind of trying to read other books in between because reading them back to back is impossible because they're all chunky like this the other two are even bigger than this one and it just takes a while to get get to like uh, to get done so I want to kind of read a little bit more before I read that but I will be getting that probably I'll read the second one this coming up month <clears throat> and the last book is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare I read this because I was thinking I was gonna go ahead reread the entire series because I haven't read City of Heavenly Fire yet so I was like I'll read the entire series read City of Heavenly Fire read the Shadowhunter Academy novellas, and then, because I already have uh, Min uh, Lady Midnight pre-ordered, when that comes in on the 8th, I will be prepared to start right then, but that's not going to happen anymore. Because then I picked up City of Ashes last night, and I tried to start reading, and I could not get into it very much. It was just... <clears throat> It was just really hard for me to get into, and I think that might be just because um, I want to read other things right now, and maybe it's just not that, I don't, I really don't know why I can't reread it right now. I don't know. I got to, like, the chapter where Maya is first introduced, and I remember that entire thing, like, so vividly in my mind that I, like, skipped it, and then I started reading the next chapter, and then I was just like, I just don't want to right now, so... What I decided I'm going to do instead is because since I remember most of the books, uh, like, what happens in all of the books pretty well, because I usually am very good at keeping track of that sort of thing, I'm just going to go ahead, and also the fact that I read City of Lost Souls maybe, like, four or five months ago, or something like that. It wasn't very long ago that I read City of Lost Souls, so I remember that very vividly. So, I'm just gonna go ahead, read City of Heavenly Fire, then read the Shadow Hunter uh, novellas, and then I'll be ready for Lady Midnight. But that means I don't have to rush and do it right now, you know? I think what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna read uh, Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, 
because I read the first chapter and I'm like, wow, this is going to be really good. So I'll probably read that first and then probably go ahead and get into City of Heavenly Fire. So yeah, I think that's the plan, but you know me, that might change. But yeah, so that was my reading wrap up and I read a total of... Twenty-four books in the month of February that only has 29 days. I win.